Art fair postponements in the first part of the year now mean that around seven art fairs from Chicago to Freeze in London, Tefaf in New York and Art Basel and Miami are all happening during the last few months of the year. Swiss art dealer Dominique Levi with galleries around the world says this isn't realistic. If we take this bigger, bigger than just our little art world, I do not believe anyone will want to come to an art fair as long as we don't have a vaccine for this a terrible situation, even if you have an antidote. Um, you know, Los Angeles has already banished any big gathering until 2021. Who will want in September, if, by the way, kids are finally going back to school and you will need the time to resettle families and do you really want to jump in a plane for an art fair where it's all recycled air, where you're rubbing elbow, where social distance is impossible? I think we, it's time for the art world to be realistic. And I know it's um, hard to hear because it's the main source of, uh, or one of the important source of our revenue. But I think right now, um, the health and our social responsibility and our social duties, it's much more important. I don't see any art fair before next year. Uh, if I go on the program on Art Basel in September, you're still on the list, uh, Levi Gorvi. So I wonder, um, are you consider considering not going? I've never missed the Basel Art Fair. So if the fair is existing, mm -hmm. of course we will participate. Mm -hmm. But I cannot imagine the fair finding the place and the... Um, I, I don't even think they'll be allowed to put it that way. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine. And this is valid for Maastricht and Basel and, and Miami. Now, to answer the other side of your question, is it possible to have, uh, I think it's seven, seven art fair in between September and December. Absolutely not. It, this is one of the things that has to stop. And as a gallerist, I will not do five or six fairs in a few months. If it is safe and if it is responsible, I will consider doing two or three at the great maximum. And how do you pick and choose? I mean, you know, my, my allegiance to Art Basel is unconditional. So I would, of course, do Art Basel. I have a soft spot for FIAC because I think it has finds its identity. And I like Tefaf in New York. So I think those are the only three I would consider doing in the fall. But again, I just feel it's not relevant right now. Mm -hmm. I think we have to really question what is relevant in being a gallerist. How do you show art? How do you are an ambassador for artists? How do you keep the pleasure alive for clients to maybe even desire art? And right now, it's not by putting an imposition of travel, art fair, stress, danger, conversation. I think we have to go back and, and, and look at things slightly differently, whether it's digital, whether it's the old traditional phone call, whether it's sending a, a mini exhibition in a local region where you have a few clients that can come one by one and create a private viewing room in different cities. I think there's going to be many ways to reinvent yourself until getting all together is, is not a headache also Art Basel Hong Kong in March was cancelled and then it turned into an online viewing room and you participated in that. Can you even compare it to a real fair? No, no, no. I think Art Basel Hong Kong online was a very interesting experiment because I think what it showed us, um, it's that it doesn't work. Not because the technology had an issue, not because the beginning was just an explosion I think everyone rushed to see what it was, um, but mostly the art community, not so much collectors. And it's not friendly. You go on a website, you are forced to really look at art on a digital way. It is slow. You're not having a conversation. You're not having fun. You're not seeing your friends. You're not looking at one piece of art and then looking at another and a third one, having that experience. So most people went in, stayed half an hour, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. And I think the only sales that were made were when you had made the outreach before. Hey, I'm going to launch Art Hong Kong. I have that piece in my booth, which I think you might be interested in. But therefore, you don't need the online art fair. So to me personally, I don't believe that an online art Basel has a future. It's the exact 180 opposite of what a fair is about. So it can't work like that. It has to be something that is more dynamic and more exciting than just going so slowly through booth after booth after booth. It, it doesn't work. You might as well call the gallery that you know and say, what do you have by that artist? And Art Basel 
as parents company had quite a blow in the last few weeks um their other fair basel world had a lot of major brands pulling out uh, rolex lvmh etc and of course their share price um dropped and now with the, the art fairs being canceled or postponed even worse now there are voices of, of shareholders um saying that mch group should be taken apart and sold so i was wondering if um, the selling of the Art Basel division is something that is being talked about in the art world? That's a very tough question. I think, of course, it's being talked about. I think uh, Art Basel is the fundamental art fair for art dealers and galleries all around the world. So we are all very aware and painfully aware of what's happening with the mother company. And I think, um, and I hope that it's all of our duties and responsibility to try to keep an art Basel at all cost, whether it will mean reinventing it, recreating, or whether it will mean putting energy into saving the existing one, I don't know. But yes, the conversation is full on, especially in the last 10 days when the shares have dropped so tremendously. What are your plans? Are you, are you already thinking about how to revamp the business when the lockdown is over? Yes. Yes, I think that the business had reached a speed and a, um, a drama, if you wish, and a turmoil like a vortex that, that had become impossible to sustain for collectors, for auction houses, for artists, and, and, and for us galleries. There was not a day off. There was no time to recharge. There was no time, I think, to think creatively. So however tragic this pause is, um, I think if we don't use... What, what I now call post-traumatic growth rather than post-traumatic uh, stress. If we don't grow and we don't rethink our profession and, and how to make it uh, relevant, then we're not responsible. So yes, uh, we are thinking about that and talking about that all the time right now. So you're not worried. I mean, one curator told me that um, she's worried if that goes on, that people will hold back their money and not invest in art. And that was kind of worrying. So, I mean, that's also where you and your employees live from. So are you seeing a slowdown and you're okay with that? I mean, am I okay with the slowdown? Absolutely not. But do I have to accept? Yes. Are we seeing a slowdown? Tremendous. The business, I believe, is down 90%, if not 95%. Uh, we are to stand still. Uh, the market is not clear of where it is. The market doesn't know, are we at a place where we are at 20% less, 30% less, 50% less? So right now, there's an adjustment period. However, am I a fundamental believer that art is essential and that at one point, the desire for collector to be engaged with art is part of the survival kit? To me, you need food. Uh, yes, you need health, you need shelter. But if you are, um, you need art. So whether that art is buying art or seeing art, you're right, is a very fine line. Well, if museums are closed, it's going to be very hard for people to resource themselves and find that solace. Um, but the collector community, you know, had gotten so big, so engaged, so active that, yes, I'm sure we will lose a lot of people who will say, you know what, pause, um, I have great art at home. I don't need to spend money at this time. It's not responsible. It's not conscious to do it. Um, and then you will have other people saying, you know what, I, I need to be alive to live with art. It makes me a better person. It makes me a more engaged person. Uh, I continue to find joy. So if I had to answer your question, I'd say volume will not pay the costs. It might be quality, but not... Um, not volume. A big gallery, Gagosian, had to lay off people. You also furloughed some employees. Um, and you also told Artnet News that you want to get them back after 90 days and that you don't want to lay off people until the next year. So I wonder why are you so convinced that you can keep them? I'm not convinced. I'm only hopeful. I feel a deep sense of responsibility towards my employee. Um, and we've had to indeed furlough some people that we're hoping to get back, but there's no security. The security is more in the people we took and we kept. We've asked enormous sacrifices from our team. Everyone took strong pay cuts. 
uh, Brett and I committed to not um, take anything out of the business until uh, we can put it all back together. But it's not, I'm realizing it's not putting it back together, it's putting it forward together. So without knowing what the business will look like, um, my first commitment is to our team because that's my responsibility and I owe it to them. Um, but indeed, there might be a point where you can't. Mm -hmm. But that is the last thing right now that I want to think about. I'm a businesswoman, I'm a realistic, but I also feel I have a social responsibility here. Mm -hmm. And so how to combine the business side, which is, yes, let's just slash everything and sit and wait, or your responsibility, I have to hold on as long as we can, as we try to morph and reinvent. And I have to be agile because guess what? For the first time in our life, it's not like the 08 crisis or these financial crises where you know that there's always another country which is less affected or another financial person who's less affected. So the business can navigate on an international way. You can navigate, okay, the, the dollar in, in America is in disarray, but right now China is strong. This is the first time that you have a worldwide crisis that affects everyone. So there's no way to know what tomorrow is made of. Mm -hmm. So I have to put both and hopefully find an answer that combines imagination and creativity and love for our work, responsibility, which is essential, all this under a business hat. And guess what? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you also mentioned that the business might be down up to 90%. And if you don't know what is happening I wonder how long can you even sustain yourself in this situation right now? You know, with galleries all around the world, the sustaining is going to depend on how you can renegotiate your fixed cost. So that's been, as I said to you earlier, renegotiating rent and salaries and managing your cost in a very different way has been our first duty. And we've, we've been, I think, really efficient there. The second is how you're going to value your inventory uh, and, and sell, even if you need to sell at loss, to keep the business going as long as you can. Um, but look, I am convinced that mankind is resilient, humanity is resilient. We haven't perished uh, at the time of the Black Plague. We haven't perished at the time of AIDS, which killed so many more people than Corona. We're not perishing with Corona. We're just pausing for a while and maybe uh, learning different behavior or having to adapt to different behavior. So we will be there. We will have a gallery. We will show art. How, at what cost, with how many people, uh, I don't know. So you have to admit what you are sure of is how relevant art and artists and creativity and creation is. And then you move forward and you say, okay, there's a big unknown how and when. And I believe that my team is incredibly agile, that I am agile, and that we will adjust and adapt. But there is the unknown. On that positive note, thank you so much and all the best.